Hey guys, um, I appreciate uh, you guys watching the videos and I appreciate your feedback as well. And I have to retract a couple statements I made. Um, that manifold that I took off the 5.9 uh, will only fit on the 4BT if you put the uh, turbo in the center. It is baffled, so if you move it too far one side, three cylinders will be driving the turbo on one side and one on the other. And that, that's not good for airflow for the pistons and it's not good for the turbo as well. Um, what you can do though is the manifolds off of a 5.9 that was in the Ford 8000. It drops straight down like this, um, uh, the 4BT manifold. So the 5.9 the on the Dodge comes out on an angle. So if you want to build compounds and you're tight for room, you're going to put a small turbo on anyway, that might still work. Or you can still use the 4BT uh, manifold and you are able to still turn it up and have your turbo at the front. Um, it's whatever you want, but that turbo um, is also not working. The 5.9 turbo, the HX35, is too big. It takes too long to spool, so we put the original turbo back on again, and uh, we're able to see some uh, boost numbers and hear the turbo line now. So, um, yeah, sorry about that, and I appreciate all the comments. Uh, this is my first 4BT build. I did a couple 5.9s before. Um, but uh, I appreciate all the input and if there's any more advice I'd love to hear it especially how to get more boost at the uh, lower RPM so thanks guys and uh, keep keep the comments coming so finally got my truck legally on the road today um, hooked up the gauges for my pyrometer my trans everything's hooked up um, and Last week we made the video on the first drive and I was pretty happy because uh, I realized I have zero boost. So that uh, turbo from the 5.9 does not work, it's too big and a couple of the guys that uh, saw me put that on uh, way back in the earlier videos let me know that definitely uh, that turbo is too big. So um, the right, uh, I get zero boost, the gauge is working. But I'm happy because I love the way it drives even without any boost, so it only gets better from here. And I'm happy that at uh, 85, 90 kilometers an hour, I'm doing about 17, 1800 RPM. Uh, the transmission temp seems to be around 140, so that, that's pretty decent. Um, the exhaust temp is fine, but yeah, we're not running any boost yet, so I, I imagine those numbers will go up. I'm really happy with the sound inside. It's not that loud. I need to clean it yet, I need to do an alignment. Um, the steering wheel shakes a little bit. I put different tires on. I put the chrome tires on and they're vibrating a little bit and I got a little bit of tire rub. It's hitting the mud flap on the, or the, the wheel well. has plastic so I can just pull that back a little bit somehow. Uh, but yeah, really happy with it. So maybe we'll do a um, go down this side road and I'm going to do a uh, 0 to let's say 60 or 80. We'll see how long it takes to get there and then when we get the other turbo I'll see what uh, if we can beat that time at all. From zero to 80. No boost. Pyrometer running at 800. 850. 80k. Okay, so 16.16.51 seconds to uh, go from zero to 80, and I I can see my needle moving just a hair. So that makes me happy because I know the gauge is working. I know there's no leak, but I also know that I don't have any boost because uh, my turbo is too big. So I'm gonna put the original turbo back on again. Uh, this is still stock. I haven't done anything with the fuel yet, um, so it should only be running at 105 horse. Um, once, uh, I, I'm not going to bother playing with the fuel yet, I want to see what the stock turbo does uh, with the stock fuel. I'm hoping to push about 15 psi or so. Um, I'm hoping by turning up the fuel that I can get a bit more. I also uh, ordered the fuel pin on the Governor's Spring to go up to 3200 RPM and uh, want to try and see uh, what the difference is and then measure again. Uh, how long it takes me to get to 80. So I'm really happy with this actually. It drives nice, it drives beautiful. It's, it's not that loud. Um, it's comfortable. My gauges are working the way they're supposed to. The heated seats and everything go uh, work the way they're supposed to. I put the other 
chrome rims on. I haven't put the tire monitors on yet, so the service tire monitor is coming on and the reduced engine power. But I have it on the road now, so before I cut any of the wires yet, I'm going to do the EFI Live and uh, see if I can turn all those monitors off and get that reduced engine power off and then uh, go from there. The uh, dash is also, this is the dash out of um, my other truck. I, uh, the, the step motors are gone and the one that came with the uh, uh, Tahoe, so I'm going to replace the step motors and I'm also going to put the blue bulbs in there to match these. I think the blue and the green would look pretty good, so this is uh, where we're at. But uh, I'm supposed to be babysitting, so i got to go back to the house before my wife gets out of the shower. Baby sleeping, but... <laughs> So guys, I want to talk a little bit about tuning on the pump. Now, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. There's a pile of threads on 4BTSwaps.com, uh, Dodge Forums, uh, Cummins Forums, all on how to tune your truck. Basically, I want to tune it and see what the difference is in the drivability uh, and talk about some stuff that I ran into that uh, um, I didn't come across on my threads before. So uh, before I put my fuel pin in, I went with the original. And you can see where a, a little pin rides up against here. The steeper the ramp is, the more fuel that you get. And what happened when I pulled this thing out, um, I must have caught this little lip and did something to my pin. Now you can see the pin down in here. That needs to flop, not, not by its own weight, but it needs to slide in that hole really easy, and it doesn't. And you can, you can see a little paddle that pushes up against it through this Allen plug on the side of the uh, AFC housing. When I pull that pin out, it goes really tight, and it, it clicks. The, this little paddle didn't have enough to push the pin over again. So what was happening is the, the pump wasn't getting full fuel. I took that pin out and, and tried to sand it down with some 1000 grit sandpaper and that didn't seem to change anything. So I actually took the top housing off of the 5.9 donor engine and it's identical other than um, the lever to pull the fuel on was slightly different but um, that, that was not a problem. So. Um, I put that one on and I had great uh, great luck with it, finally got some boost. I disconnected my air to air just to see what the difference was um, in the lag time. The bigger your air to air is, the more time it takes to fill up all that space and get the boost into your engine. So the more piping, the bigger the air to air, the more lag you have, but the colder the air is and the more uh, condensed the air is. So your basic uh, theory on how this works is this is more or less a stop for your fuel pin to hit. Um, the steeper the ramp, the more fuel you're gonna get. So as you go in, this little pin butts up against here and that decides how much fuel you get. By tightening your, your uh, aneroid screw at the very top, you're pushing against the spring pressure and pushing this to give it more fuel. The, the spring that sits in your star adjuster goes against the boost pressure that comes out of your manifold. The boost pushes down on here and your spring pressure goes against it. So no boost fueling is this screw right here. This is when you're first taking off, you're giving it that fuel too much, you get the black smoke. And guys, I wanna say back off on the black smoke because you're gonna ruin it for all the diesel guys. Uh, the environmental is a kind of a big issue right now. Uh, Ten years ago, nobody cared. Now everything is environmental and going green. If you guys keep blowing rolling coal and, and showing off with all this black smoke, the, the, the cops and the MTO and the environmental are going to crack down and they're going to take all the trucks off the road and they're going to get really nasty on the lifted trucks, the stacks out the back. So leave those guys alone and just enjoy your trucks, guys. Anyway. So keep that aneroid so that it doesn't smoke when you first take off. And then the more spring pressure, the more you back this off, the more it fights your boost. So um, it won't fuel until you get your boost. The farther you turn this screw down, the less spring tension is against this diaphragm. You'll get more fuel as you're taking off and getting your boost. So that's, that's the basic principles of it. But in doing so, I, I got that pin stuck 
and I had a no fuel issue and, and I, my battery was dead in the camera so I didn't take any uh, video of that while it was charging but it was a frustrating night but by putting the other housing on I was able to overcome that again so what we're gonna do uh, right now my truck has the fuel pin in it, the 3200 Governor Spring. Uh, the aneroid valve is down, a bit too much black smoke when I take it off. I'm going to back off the aneroid a little bit. Because I don't have much boost when I'm going down the uh, road at an idle, I'm going to turn my, my star adjuster in about, uh, we'll start with half a turn and then go from there. So here we go. So right now at an idle, when uh, with the fuel pin in it, the governor spring on it, with not having the star wheel adjusted, I get zero boost when I'm revving. So let's see what happens when we turn that star adjuster and give it a little more fuel.